the industry is undergoing a lot of changes. They're looking to standardize safety procedures, and you can see why. Uh, there's a ton of zip lines that have popped up, uh, over 200 of them that had popped up between 2001 and 2011. So over that 10 years, saw tremendous growth, but even more so uh, that's taken off since 2011 to current day. Uh, this says over 400 in 2015. Uh, there's well over 400, closer to 500 now in the United States, and over 1,000 internationally. So there's a huge opportunity for a better braking system to have a better safety procedure as people are approaching the landing. Any of these in, uh, emergency room visits, you can see a huge rise in that because there wasn't a better safety system to be able to slow down as you're approaching the landing. And so I... Uh, have a little overview about what we use at our facility. So this new braking system is something I developed. I call it Zip VR. We use a virtual reality 360 camera on mounted on the front of our braking system, like you guys just saw the video that I had played. Uh, one gives a really cool perspective that you cannot see when you're zip lining because it's shooting from up above the zip line. So you can actually see yourself while you're zip lining after the fact. We have Bluetooth technology where you, people can be watching it on the phone of their friends and family out there zip lining at the time. So with this new technology, we have over 10 zip, we have 10 zip lines, uh, average about 50 people a day, which means we're having 500 safe landings a day. Since 2013, when I had started beta testing on this, uh, we have a 100% safety record, and it really enforced the fact that using a leather padded glove is a terrible idea if you're trying to have somebody come out and do a new, uh, new activity they've never done before. We have kids as young as three. Our oldest guest with us was 96 years old. So you see a huge range of participants. So we want to make it as easy as possible. One, grabbing on the zip line is not safe, but it's an awkward arm motion and grabbing uh, can cause shoulder issues. With this system, you're just engaging the brake by pulling down on a safety strap that is hooked onto the uh, braking mechanism above the zip line. So the zip line industry is mostly operated by people that don't have experience operating other zip lines. They have a piece of land, think it would be a cool thing to get into the tourism industry. So that's another reason we want a standardized system because any accident is a poor reflection on the industry as a whole. So with this technology, you can shoot 360 degrees um, and rather than grabbing on a zip line where an accident could occur, you're able to monitor both the guide who is catching the guest and what the guest is doing as they're approaching the landing. So as an operator, it helps protect me to know that everyone's doing the right thing. So this is some of the current art that's used out there. So you can see the top uh, row there is what are called impact brakes. You have this really high technology of old tires on a zip line. Terrible idea. Coming in very fast, you hit some old tires, it's gonna stop you, but it's not gonna be comfortable. Uh, the other is what's called a brake block. It means it's a big black block that when you hit it, it hurts. You come in fast and it almost feels like you're in a car accident because it stops you so abruptly. The other is a magnetic resistance system with springs. Again, you come in fast, it stops you quick. So anytime you're having that jarring motion is not a comfortable landing. The others on the bottom are, what are called active braking systems. Uh, this one on the left is what's called a brake hawk. Again, you have to reach above the zip line and pull down on a mechanism to slow yourself down. With that type of braking system, it pivots the pulley back so all of the weight now goes to one ball bearings and you blow out a lot of pulleys doing this. Uh, one of the manufacturers up here, Petzl, has released um, care for their uh, pulley systems that said they do not recommend using that style brake because it will uh, void the warranty and will break their pulleys. With our mechanism, one of the claims on our provisional patent is that it pivots within the system, does not put any extra stress on the ball bearings, which extends the life of the pulley itself in addition to shooting 360 degree video on it. So this is just a little analysis of the technology that's involved, like we were talking about ropes, tires, all of that very low technology, um, and then Zip VR, what we've developed using a camera system. We're the only zip line brake system that uses a uh, system to be able to film, so be able to mount a camera, GoPro, 360 camera, whatever it may be, onto that braking system. These are a couple of the milestones that we've hit. So we have a 100% safety record using this system since 2013. Uh, we have a provisional patent on it right now, uh, working on filing a utility patent. We've 
got positive feedback from zipline builders in the industry that are testing this technology to implement on other courses. And we won the 2016 Mid-Missouri Innovation Competition Award. We took third place, top product at that uh, innovation competition. And so since then, that was our original Zip VR system. We have uh, since changed it up where we've redesigned some aspects of this, redesigned with some proprietary braking technology. Um, so we're very excited about the new changes that we made that have made it even better. And what we've been able to do is expand our compatibility with many of the brake systems. You see there's multiple brake systems that are industry standard. We want to be able to accommodate and be compatible with all of those. Uh, as I mentioned, huge growth in the industry. It's growing at about 30%. Uh, we can utilize about 75% of the tandem uh, pulleys in the industry because of our compatibility. And we want to be able to have the standard for uh, zip lines across the board. No matter what type of system they're using, it should be compatible with ours. And with this active braking system, the control is in the user's hands. They're not waiting to hit something to slow down. They're able to slow themselves over a long distance for a very smooth landing. So the benefits of this is not only for the operators that they can sell now the 360 video that I showed before, but that is more cost effective because their insurance premiums can come down. We're working with insurance companies to lower premiums if they're using this type of system. So we've gotten positive feedback from insurance companies because they're tired of having this as a industry standard safety system. It's a uh, bad system. They know it and they are looking for better technology as well. So we're also looking at licensing this technology, we just want to be able to get this into the industry. So uh, we're looking at trying to run an Indiegogo campaign. I have a little sign-up sheet here. If anybody is interested or has experience with crowdfunding, we would love for you guys to sign up. Even if you're not that interested, you're willing to just send out an email to your network and just share uh, what we're doing. We would love to be able to uh, get the word out. That's the biggest obstacle we're overcoming right now. Like I mentioned, uh, we're in New Florence, Missouri. We're not on most maps, so building a entrepreneurial uh, ecosystem in that area is very difficult. I'm working here in St. Louis, Columbia, trying to bridge that gap between the two in New Florence to try and get some interest in a new technology like this. So we're going to be running an Indiegogo campaign, a uh, very visual uh, campaign using some drones, using this 360 technology, some cool stuff to make a nice video and would love for you guys to share it with your networks. So what the big ask right now is we're looking for help from patent attorneys uh, for completing the utility patent, licensing uh, this technology, and just to be able to network with you guys to help us get our Indiegogo campaign off the ground. We're looking at kicking that off at the end of September. So I know I probably ran a little long, but I appreciate you guys being here today and hearing about what we have to offer. would love to welcome you guys out to come zip line with us. And uh, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Wait for the mic. Who's got a question? Oh, the shirt's got. So I went uh, ziplining with my wife several years ago, and they didn't make a glove that was small enough for her. She's really okay. small, and the glove came off. Great. As she was going <laughs> down, and the guy had to give her his glove, and he was yelling at her. And not too bad, but. You don't yell at my wife. <laughs> so I've seen that glove come off when it's not working right. And right. she, I don't know, when you're on many of these courses, you have to zip line out. Yes. There's no way down sometimes other than to zip line through. Why isn't this the standard? I mean, I, I thought I was in the 1900s going down right. this thing. So you're talking 1900s and 21st century technology. Yeah. So there's a ton of engineering that goes into building a zip line course. They spend all this time making sure everything's riding right, that it's uh, built to the highest standards. And then you give somebody like this and you say, okay, make up you know, a hundred of these and give these to your guests. Not only are they then getting a worn out glove, because none of them are gonna look nice, none of them are brand new, because they're getting cycled through and handed from one guest to another. So you're handing a old glove, maybe it's sweaty, whatever it may be. It's a terrible technology as it is, but this is what has been used for so long. There wasn't kind of that innovative approach to looking at the industry, trying to get new technology in there. I was doing this every day and saw people grabbing in front. 
and you know having shoulder issues or maybe not even having arms long enough to reach above their straps here so as you guys can see you're tethered to a strap if you've never ziplined before so you do have to have some arm mobility and some shoulder mobility to reach up and grab the zipline so you have to reach high you have to have that shoulder mobility to grab and having a grip strength is different for everybody so some people are going to grab hard some a little softer and that guide has to be able to judge that speed this is going to be a constant braking system as you're pulling down you're going to be able to slow down over a long distance so the industry really needs it as you know from your first-hand experience and i hear that every time i do a speech i've done this before i don't know why they're using this or they're using something in addition to this like a brake block or an impact where they're coming in and hitting it hard and it's not a fun way to stop so uh, this has a huge opportunity because of what we're competing against there really needs to be a better system yeah, this needs to be standard. Are you willing to do a testimonial? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Get this out. That's the biggest thing. People that can share their first-hand experience and say, this is why we need it, is, I, I think, the most important thing. Yeah, the glove goes flying down, and she's like, how do I stop now? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I've been sipping uh, in Mexico before and in here in the States. And in Mexico, they use something different that I hadn't seen on your slide, but it's something they, they slide out on the line, yep. and it kind of helps to slow you down and receive you. And I don't know if... It, that is a, an acceptable method of, of breaking technology, but it seemed to be effective anyways. Mm -hmm. And then my other thought was, um, I think on one of your slides, you had said something about the consumer market and, and private market. And I think, uh, I had no idea that people actually do this, but I had a buddy that has 160 acres in Licking, Missouri, and he put up three zip lines, and he has a brake caulk, I guess, type system. And, that, yeah, and, that we had uh, showed here, yeah. Yeah, so, so I've, I've experienced that style as well, and I guess I've, I've we're curious to learn more of, and I don't know if you can explain how yours actually breaks, but how does it how does it slow down on or, or it? it, it uh... Absolutely. So I have uh, two different brakes here. One has been used, so you see how it's grooved in. Uh, so the other is a brand new brake pad that's uh, completely flat. As you're braking, you're applying friction to the line. So same principle as a glove, and you're just taking your hand out of the equation on the zip line. So as you're pulling down, it's pivoting back, adding friction to the line, slowing you down over a distance. With this braking material, it doesn't grab like leather does, so it continues to slide. So you have that longer area to decelerate. So the brake hawk uses a rubber material that uh, you have to, they teach you at other courses when you're taking off, you're riding like this the entire time with your hand on that. That's not a comfortable way and a fun way to ride every line like this, no matter what. Uh, in addition to that, there's been accidents at courses that were using that type of product. And what I've been told by those courses that reach out to me that left a film on the line um, that you know, ours does not leave with our proprietary braking material. So um, we have, like I said, 100% safety record. We want to get it out into the industry because there is a better system that's involved now. You ride engaging the brake. Uh, using uh, your strap here. Every uh, system should have a redundancy, so you're not only riding on one strap, you have a redundancy. Now your redundancy brake uh, strap is acting as a, a braking system. So it makes sense that if you have this strap dangling there, not serving a purpose, now we utilize that. So how big is that, that consumer market or that, that private so again, you don't really know just the industry statistics that I've seen is over 13,000 private zip lines. It could be one zip line like your buddy, three, four, ten yeah. zip lines, whatever their property might be able to accommodate. So it is a very large market. Most of those are probably one or two zip lines uh, that they're in the backyard zipping in and they might be hitting springs or they have a, a mattress up on the, you know, even in Mexico, as you mentioned, a lot of those will have a mattress on the side of a tree. They like brace as you come in, hip check a mattress. Uh, not the best way to do it. I've had other people, I've never done one like this, but said in Mexico, they gave them a crooked wooden stick and said, drag this stick on there. So very, again, very high technology out there. So you're dragging a stick across, dragging across enough. Uh, the friction on there is going to wear that stick out. We've had people say that their stick is broken and said, you know, where's our braking stick when we check in? They've also asked why we don't take a donkey back when we uh, get finished with our course. Uh, that's one thing that when you design a facility, we have our course that takes off right from the edge of our parking lot. 
We zip all around. We're never suspended in towers the entire time. You don't have to climb up 100 stairs. You have 15 steps on a couple of platforms, and we're using the natural lay of the land. You guys may have seen on the video, and I'll play it again for you. I also have a VR headset here. If anybody wants to actually do the 360 view on there, you can see that we're zipping over ravines, so the ground's dropping out. So we're over 250 feet high because the ground's dropping out from under us as opposed to us going up 250 feet. So people are afraid of heights. It's a much more uh, welcoming way to do it. So every time you're walking up a step, there's going to be more and more anxiety involved with that. So with our course, you're very low to the ground on the takeoff. And then you're out on the highest point when you're enjoying the views. And now you're not worried about the height. So we help a lot of people overcome their fears as well. Excellent presentation. I have a question you. for you. Are you basically interested in just licensing the technology out or you want to do it yourself? I'm open to anything. I want I developed this because I want the industry to be safer. It's not that I want our course to use a proprietary technology that we're going to hide behind and not let anybody else use. I would love to be able to get this in the hands of uh, equipment manufacturer or license this technology that has the distribution channels. They can get this out quickly, a lot quicker than I can. But if they're not open to that or there's an opportunity to run a campaign to be able to get this out there and there's builders that are already interested, other courses that will take interest in it. Um, I think that the market is easy to be able to identify because if you're using this type of system and you're using a inferior brake, after you've invested a ton of money into the, into the building of a zip line, implementing an add-on technology would be fairly easy, but I'm open to any yeah, option I can. I would think like your exit would be licensed at the Pepsi because then, yes. then you can concentrate on the fun stuff and yeah. not have to worry about running a company. Now I have contacted Petzl. They, uh, they're out of France. They said that their pipeline is so full right now they're not willing to take on a new product. So I have gotten to their um, R&D department and it went through months and months of, uh, you know, they were looking at not only the marketing side of it, the R&D side of it, a lot of different factors, and said that their pipeline's too full to take on a new product like this. Um, so there are a lot of different manufacturers uh, it, that are manufactured here in, in uh, the United States that make uh, zipline equipment, and we utilize one that's called Fusion. It's an equipment manufacturer. So you know we've started the talks there, but uh, with having it installed out with uh, Petzl was disheartening. But you know there's a lot of other companies out there. So then the idea for maybe company number three, how many organizations or companies out there are there to help you set up a zip line? Is there a consulting agency? Maybe you could do that as there, well. There that are seems quite, like you know, obvious you have so much experience. There are all these people that want to set these up. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that would be a great opportunity. There are some that uh, deal in more the consulting where they'll come in and look at your property and maybe introduce you to different builders. So there are people in that field. Uh, again, there's so much that's involved when we started our new facility we opened in june the training aspect everybody for the building aspect that's prime time every zip line from the ymca to you know major courses like ours that are uh, open to the public have to get certified and trained and there's so much involved so the industry is growing so fast and it is reaching a point that there would be opportunities for luck for that as well absolutely hey can i see a show of hands who's zip line before just to kind of have an idea. I guess it's kind of flesh out what he was talking about. Like, what is your end game? I mean, specifically from the, the, the product side. I mean, are you are you just looking to license this? I mean, even though Petzl said, oh, we want to do it. I mean, I think that, I think if their competitors started using them, then it becomes very obvious. Uh, I mean, it, it, be, it would become obvious that that's a, you know, a safety issue for them. Right. And it'd be potentially a big, Legal aspect, you know, legal issue for them. Um, I mean, what is your your end game as far? And if, if you haven't thought of that, I mean, it's like, hey, we want a day we want to get acquired by Pencil, or one day we want this or that. And if you haven't thought about that, that's fine. But I'm just kind of wondering, or do you want to keep producing more products? I mean, do you have more ideas in your head? Just kind of talk a little more long term. I do. So there's other products that I've been uh, kind of developing as I'm going through. Again, doing this every day, I'm seeing a need for different things. Other courses have different needs than uh, what we're uh, using in our course. We have a great course that people come in, they land where they're supposed to, but there are courses out there where they're engineered maybe poorly, where they don't have people that make it all the way into the landing. So you have someone stuck out there now where you have to retrieve them. So you know, I've been kind of toying with different products like that that would integrate with this product, would be a retrieval system. Uh, 
Um, and so there are opportunities with that. So as far as the end game, I want to get this into the industry. If it means licensing <coughs> technology and getting it into whatever equipment manufacturer, with having the compatibility with a lot of different products, it could be easily an add-on product that is sold aftermarket. Um, I just want to get it out there. So if the easiest way would be licensing it, getting it in, uh, because we have it made here in Missouri, in St. Louis, uh, by a machining company, so it's great that we can have that uh, design impact. If we're seeing an issue, they can redesign the product for us, mill out different, uh, as we integrate into different pulleys, as we see a new one that enters the industry, we can adjust uh, this pin that uh, pivots within the system. So it gives us a lot of flexibility to be able to be very nimble within the industry, but ideally I want to get this out there. So if it means us, you know, I don't have a team, so you know, calling on every zipline company out there is going to be very difficult. So ideally, the, the easiest path is going to be licensing, and that's where I'd like to take it. All right. Well, thank you very much. Right. I guess thank everybody you. stick around and um, get more questions for Mike. Stick around, have a cup of coffee with people, and. Uh, check out the VR headset and everything else. So thank you very much for coming. I'll see you next week. You guys.